Right, we're leaving Fort Pierce downtown, and that's our spot right there. And we decided to back out into this uh, open area and head out the back gate. Mainly because there's palm trees up front and, you know, not sure if we'll make it. I'm sure we would, but why not back up? We've got all this room. So we're hooking up the um, Honda right now. And Mark said, get the camera. We have a problem. You're standing we have a problem. It's our problem. So when you hook your rig up, even though you've hooked your tow bar set up, you know, hundreds of times, you look and touch certain things and you try to do it exactly the same so it always looks the same so you can pick up on something that doesn't look the same all of a sudden. Well, as I'm looking at this, I always look at this lock here so that somebody doesn't steal this whole contraption. I have this lock on here. And so somebody doesn't steal the whole shooting match, I have this lock on here. Except I look on here, what? and the freaking lock is gone. What? How yeah. did that happen? Uh, it, it broke off, or maybe with a turn, this binded against there, either that or somebody was beating on it, trying to steal it, but it doesn't look like there's any damage here. Right. So I'm thinking it just broke off. So I didn't touch it yet, I don't want to get dirty. Hopefully, that's an O-ring or something and that I'll be able to get off and put a new pin in so we can get going shortly. All right. But that's the project that's next. First, we gotta put some def. All right, def comes first. So there's all sorts of theories. If you're better off paying through the nose, buying Blue Def Premium, there's also theories if you're worth paying through the nose and at least buying blue def in boxes or just go the cheap route and get it at the truck stop hoping that somebody that shows up that's slopping a whole bunch of this stuff in a tank that the company that owns it they're they're loathing the day that they ever have to do anything to replace it so you know they're gonna keep that baby operating uh, uh, under the radar as quick as they can or as long as they can and I just I I don't trust the way the pumps look. They're dirty usually. They got little white crystals on them and stuff. It just seems to me that this surgical way to provide a nice package, clean little thing. You'll notice I have the date on here, 11 6 21. That's when we bought it. This spot right here is for our def. When I put this in here, the next time we buy fuel, I will buy a def so I have it. Normally, I would go through it a little faster, this 11-6. Right now, the date is uh, the 3rd of January, 2022. Yeah, two months um, later. This is two months, old, two months old already sitting in here. Normally, that doesn't happen, but we've been uh, spending uh, two weeks at each of our stops as we're creeping in here towards the, the Tampa RV show. Uh, so that's how we do it. There's plenty of people that think that that's ridiculous, but I haven't had any problems yet. But I probably am less susceptible to problems because my def unit here is old and it only measures temperature and it measures level of the def in here. It does not, this def head that's way in the back here, that fancy thing there, mine does not measure def quality. And I think it's the def quality electronics and setup on the newer units that just isn't up to the task. And that's uh, where the def has really got a bad rap because that def head goes bad, because it gets confused on doing what it's doing. I have a much simpler, stupid system on mine. Ours is a 2014 Newmar Dutch Star. There you have it. Please keep us def problem free. I got problems with the pin. Let's put it in there and start diagnosing our pin. Right, so I carried the um, box of def over. I carried the box of def over. And now Mark. Well, that's because by uh, marital agreement, we have an agreement <laughs> that you do all the hard, heavy lifting jobs and I do the easy stuff. Woo. So you'll notice we have the DEF only 
uh, funnel. I don't use this for anything else other than this so I don't contaminate it. I rinse it out with regular water so I don't have little powder um, um, coagulating yeah. in there. So honey, why don't you get in position <laughs> yeah. and then I can pretend I help. So what hold, I do, hold that. What I do is I do this. Yes. How are we doing, honey? <laughs> You're doing a good let's, job, let's baby. Get a, let's get a picture of that muscle. Yes. Yeah. All okay. right, pay attention. Look at how hard I got it here. Pay attention. All right, I'm going to put the phone down. All right, <laughs> see ya. All right, first thing to do is get yourself a peepee. Mm. Okay. That's a given. Let's hope that's a rubber O-ring sitting there. Oh, baby. So, this lock mechanism totally was broken off. Oh my god. Look at it. There was a pin and a ball detent that was supposed to go in there. And that was just sitting there. And then this pin, look at this. This pin would slide right out. Right. And the only reason it didn't slide out is it, it was sitting down lower. Yeah. Look at this. Oh my god. So you're going to take it out rather than try to hold it in place? Well, I've got a spare pin. Come on. Oh, honey. you do? Oh my god. Come Duh. on. Oh my this god. is the Chan Man. Come on, oh honey. God. You're the best. Uh, That's why we keep rolling. That's why you keep me. <laughs> so, tow bar, extra tow bar supplies are in this. Right. It's probably this one. And I have extra pins for the uh, side connections. Okay. I have extra these because these things are awesome. These were harder, awesome. hard to find. I don't know why. Um, we have extra rubber things to go on the airlines so that once you disconnect and you're driving around in uh, dusty areas you're not loading up your piping your air piping and to have future problems but here's the thing that you really want to make sure you have you can't go to a hardware store and buy this lanyard with this goofy little plastic thing here now if some jokester kid or somebody nefarious pull this out of your Honda this is the breakaway pin that would set your brakes and yeah if you know what you're doing you can disconnect some fuses and things and disconnect the mechanism that in fact is setting your brakes with the residual air that's in there um, and you can get going but you kind of got to know what you're doing this is a handy pin to have just in case somebody steals the breakaway pin that is in your Honda so this pin here if this tow bar would have fell off, uh, this lanyard would stay, this lanyard and the cable would stay with the rig, uh, assuming this joint didn't break here, and it would yank this plastic thing out of this switch, and then this switch would set the brakes on the Honda and slow the Honda down so it doesn't cause all sorts of uh, collateral damage. This is kind of a prime example here, what we just saw here. For the people that choose to not have a supplemental braking system, somehow they're convincing themselves that they don't need it, or my my toad is too light, blah, 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 blah. There's very few states that would understand at all if this thing breaks loose and you don't have a supplemental braking system on it, you're gonna be in you're gonna be in uh, not a good legal position. Look at you. Oh, baby. Well, we got four and a half years out of it. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. No complaints. Yeah. I'm glad you caught it. Do I get a congratu congratulatory back rub tonight? How about a rounding of applause? Now, see, here's the scary part. You know, this big honking thing here. Yeah. Which way are you going to go? Yeah. 
And you can see why I didn't like it. It's pretty precarious. Mm -hmm. All right. We're good. So now he's going to study it for a while. Yeah. It's a Mark Chandler method. Yeah. Uh, you know, if I tried to push it even further past, now it kind of stays there. Yeah, see, and it won't it won't rotate, oh, so good. it stays there. So don't laugh at the Mark Chandler method. <laughs> I should never. You keep us on the road. Yeah. Okay. So this is the pin that I have now. You can see that the locks are uh, as small a diameter as I can get. I got one that's longer, so it kind of slops around a little bit in case one of those hooks decides to start laying into it and uh, trying to nut crack it. In the past, we've had various episodes that talk about the different things that can cause stress when you're driving your motor home. I find it kind of funny here. You got this little fence on the left-hand side that said, oh, oh, you made the decision to go on the tollway. You better suffer the consequences. We did an episode 177 that uh, talked about some of the uh, fun going through a toll booth. We had some uh, vehicle brake issues and an issue while parking you might want to check up on that one what went wrong on this toll one uh, was not so much that we were surprised that we had a toll road we in fact welcomed them and had planned that in our trip the corker was the realization that the actual troll transponder was in the Honda in back of me and not in the motorhome proper. And in fact, we weren't even sure if it was in a protective metal case in the glove compartment or if it was on the dashboard. We were pretty sure it was on the dashboard and we were hoping that it would work and we wouldn't um, you know, be photographed and have to uh, chase after these tolls later. We think they worked. I've since uh, checked on it. This exercise with the tolls reminded us of the problems that we've had in the past, where although we have two transponders, one for Florida and one for a lot of the tolls in between Florida and Wisconsin, that in fact many times when we were out west, we did not have the right transponder for the state that we were in and then uh, we would be photographed and I'm not kidding, sometimes four or five months later we'd get something in the mail uh, for the first time that said that we owed a toll and we would have only a week or so to pay for it so it was a little inconvenient. Uh, when we were at the TSD logistics booth in the Tampa RV show uh, this year, we discovered that they have a new program where they have a, a system or a toll transponder that is actually hooked up to the TSD logistics account that you may or may not already have for your fuel card. So you can go to their site and you can read about the Freedom Pass or you know if you don't have a TSD logistics card you can either read through all of these uh, questions and answers here or you can cut to the chase and look at our episode that explains how it works. But this Freedom Pass is good at all of the states shown there and soon to be uh, good at the ones that they're currently working on. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's kind of a double transponder. We're really looking forward to this simplifying our tolling uh, uh, system in the future by having the funds drawn from our existing TSD logistics fuel card program um, uh, account. Howdy. How are we doing? Good. Check in? Yep. What's the name? 
Chandler, Mark. Okay. I drove as slow as I could to get here and not get kicked out that I'm too early. Let me get your signature right here, please, sir. All right. It's going to be yours. Okay. And Mr. Roundell, let's go to back to your side. Okay. Do I have a pull through or a back end? Uh, what's the lot number? 113, I believe. Yeah, 113. One. It's pull through. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here's where the stress level drops back down to zero. We're at the Cabana Club RV Resort that while we were here on our 15-day stay, it actually rebranded itself into the Camp Margaritaville RV Resort in Auburndale, Florida. So you can see that this is a brand new park, so the trees are not fully matured yet, but boy, is it gonna be beautiful in a few years when everything fills in. Uh, when we pull into our spot here, you'll notice how long it was. I would say this is probably the longest pull through we've been in for a long time. This company really proved to know how to treat people. We had a little snafu on our scheduling and we wanted to add two days in during their extremely busy season. And lo and behold, they were able to help us after a few days of effort. So here's what the site looks like when we're all checked in. On this map that I'm gonna show you, the Tiki Hut is item 13. And wouldn't you know it, that was one of my favorite places. They had great drinks and we met Karen and Ken and they were like-minded and loved to spend their time in the Tiki Hut as well. We'd like to invite you to check out episode 211 where we show what it's like to attend an all-inclusive motorhome club rally that coincidentally ended up being at this park while we were there. This gave us the opportunity to film a little bit of the behind the scenes, what it's like to actually attend one of these rallies. What a fun event. Uh, we were able to show you what the rally trailer install crew can do by uh, installing your Protang fire suppression equipment or retroband uh, run flat device on your rig. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and we will see you in the next video.